Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. So I'm bringing you our December budget and I do want to apologize for not having this video up yesterday. I really tried hard to get it um, posted yesterday but I just started a weight loss journey. Well I've kind of been on my weight loss journey but I started working out with a trainer and let me tell you that girl worked me out so much I couldn't even move. So getting a video out was not on the list of things I could do yesterday. Um, but anyway, it's um, December 1st, and so I still have a little bit of time, and I'm going to get my video out. So I wanted to just update you guys um, on my plan for the month. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that my family, my children, and I um, ascribe to the Dave Ramsey Zero Base Budget Plan. We use the cash envelope system, and we've been using this system for about five years. When I was doing my December budget, I actually was looking. Um, I do it on a spreadsheet, and I keep the files, and I saw files as far back as December 2011. So I've been doing this zero-based budget and cash envelopes for about five years now, probably a little bit more than that going into my sixth year. And I'm really excited about it. This system has worked for me. It's proven to be um, one of the best things that I've ever done. It's always a challenge sometimes to kind of stick to the cash, but I do the very best that I can. Um, so anyway, I did want to share with you my budget for the month of December. It's pretty basic. Things didn't really change a lot. You know, my, my base salary is pretty much the same every month with the exception of April and October when we get our annual uh, supplement, which is broken up into two um, partial payments, one in April and one in October. So any other month, unless for some reason I pick up um, a Saturday school shift or something like that, it doesn't change. However, we had a few surprises already this month, and it's just December 1st. So let me get into it really quickly. I just want to show you what I've done. So if you're following, you've been following me, you know I use this um, monthly cash flow plan. This is simply a Excel spreadsheet that a friend of mine came up with um, back, probably back in 2011. It's based off the same Dave Ramsey's uh, plan. What it has on here is it breaks your um, monthly expenses down and Dave tells you about how much you should be spending. So about 10 to 15 percent of your income should be charitable gifts, 5 to 10 percent should be savings, 25 to 35 percent should be housing, 5 to 10 percent is utilities, 5 to 15 percent is food, 10 to 15 percent is transportation, 2 to 7 percent is clothing, 5 to 10 percent is medical or health, um, rec uh, personal is 5 to 10 percent and recreational is 5 to 10 percent and debt is 5 to 10 percent now on this particular spreadsheet that some friends of mine came up with it actually calculates your percentage for you so um, once you start putting in your budget categories it will calculate for you on the actual side about how much your percentage of your income you're spending at this point because the only debt load that I carry is a student loan it's about eighty eight hundred dollars and I pay the minimum amount that I can pay I got what was called um, uh, consolidated so I'm paying like really really small amount for about 12 months 24 months and then they bump it up to a higher amount so $8,800 is the only debt load that I carry. And I'm, I have a strategy or a plan starting in January to get that debt load paid off chunk by chunk. So right now, I have about 1.75% of my income is going towards debt. So I probably need to be able to pull some other places and just start chunking this off. So here, here we're going to get into it. For the month of December, if you can see this, my total income is two thousand see if you can see it two thousand six hundred thirty four dollars and seventy seven cent and then my total expenses here equal two thousand six hundred thirty four dollars and seventy seven cent and what I do this spreadsheet is broken into two actual large category columns in one column is my actual um 
projected. So here, it's how much that is projecting I'm going to spend for the month. It's over here in this column. And everything there equals zero budgets, $2,634.77. Then on the other side over here that goes down is actually how much my bills are in the real time. So what I do is I take my my bills from the previous month and I make that my budgeted column. That's kind of what I'm thinking it's going to be. They kind of run the same. And then when I actually pay the bills, I pay them from and I put them in the actual spent column. And then there's a differential between what I thought it was going to be and what it actually ends up being. So for charitable contributions, we gave $435. For my mortgage, it's $874.02. For my long guy, and I have to do the long guy, and a lot of people say, well, you can do your own long. I really could, but I have this huge tree. It's humongous. It sits in the right in the front yard of my house, and it sheds leaves like crazy. And we looked at it today, and we think it is on its last shed. And I mean, we can go out and do the yard today and by tomorrow morning, it's it's just as much as it was. So this little guy, um, he comes over and he rakes the leaves for me and he cuts the grass. I'm going to get him to trim some bushes. And this is just a way for him to make a little extra side money. And it's just something that I really don't necessarily have time to do because my kids take Taekwondo four to five nights a week. And so we're usually not at home till very late in the evening. Um, so I'm okay with budgeting it in. And it goes under my housing um, section. So $11.42 for the insurance on my iPhone. I have um, my utilities bill is $69. My cell phone is $202. Now I'm going to tell you my cell phone was a little bit different this month. And I'll tell you why in just a second. My um, internet was $78. And my water bill was $56.91. So normally I've been doing between $40 and $50 for groceries per week. This month I dropped that back a little bit to um, $40 a week instead of doing $50. So that gave me $160 for groceries. The really reason that I did that is I did a lot of couponing in November. A lot of couponing. And so we have a, a, a overabundance of things in our pantry closet. And then we have a lot of things in our freezer. So really I'm just going to be adding in um, free items, then personal items, paper towels, uh, toilet paper, those types of things. And then um, fresh fruit, those types of things. That milk, eggs, cheese that you have to buy all the time, bread. So those are the things that I'm going to be adding in to my monthly uh, budget for December because we have so much of the excess from the November coupon shopping. 120 for gas, which is $30 a week for four weeks. I have $12 for a prescription I have to get. So this month is a prescription month for my blood pressure. $270 for karate and then $52.29 for my student loan. Once I put all those items together, that left me with a grand total of $256.13 that was left. Normally for me, I would put that in the hair budget for um, my, old, my daughter to get her hair done. That would be some blow money, some recreational money, and then I probably would have put about a hundred and some into the savings. Because it's December and it's Christmas, I chose, I made a very conscious choice to take that money and put it towards Christmas. Um, that way, I could go ahead and get some of my shopping done. And I say that, but I forgot to mention this. So my employer actually paid us last week. They paid us. We got out of school on Tuesday for Thanksgiving, and we actually got paid on Wednesday of Thanksgiving week. So I didn't have time to do the budget for December because I had so much going on with cooking and visiting and going this place and that place. So we actually did get paid the last week and I actually did my budget last week, but I didn't pay my bills until today. I actually paid bills today. The only money that I pulled out was the $253.13, which was going to be for the Black Friday shopping. Now, um, a group that I, uh, um, YouTube couple that I follow, his and her money tie and talent, 
um, they did a video and I'll try to link the video or I'll try to um, put their the link to that video in, in the description box they did a video on Black Friday shopping and so I just listened to their video it was shop you know do your sale look at your sales ahead of time figure out your list figure out who you had to shop for and we have the um, holiday planner so we wrote down everybody that we needed to buy for and the deals were so good for Black Friday that I was able to get a lot of things so with the $256 that I purposely put for the Christmas budget I was able to get my oldest daughter taken care of, my youngest daughter taken care of. I have some things for my youngest son. Not everything. I had to order. I had to order a couple things for him. Um, I got my niece, my nephew. We got another little girl at church. We got two other little friends, um, two homeschool little friends, and just um, normally every year I get my kids socks and undies and bras and all that type of stuff right at Christmas. We do a lot of the stocking stuffers. And so um, I did some of those types of things. We got a few things for Christmas decor. But other than that, the majority of that money went to pay for the Christmas gifts. Now, the biggest thing that I wanted to get for that Black Friday shopping deal was a deep freezer. And the reason I wanted to get the deep freezer because I coupon a lot. I coupon so much that I can't fit everything into my main um, kitchen fridge and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and just praying Lord I really need to get this Lord I really need to get a deep freezer first of all my old apartment we didn't have any space and so now you know we just bought this home and we do have a garage and there's space for the deep freezer so on Black Friday Walmart was having a sale on deep freezers they were $99 and because I wasn't exactly sure that I would get paid prior to Black Friday, I told my son, I said, well, if you pay for my fr for my freezer, then I will pay $100 for your cell phone bill. Because he pays $101 and I pay $101 and that takes care of the 202 on the cell phone bill. So he said, Mom, it's no problem. I'll get it for you. And so he did that because the cell phone bill doesn't roll till the middle of the month and so I was okay with getting paid after Black Friday to take care of his cell phone bill because that's not due until December 12th so it all worked out he was able to buy the freezer and I was able to get all the other gifts for everybody else that mainly we had on our list and it worked out so so well now um, so I was like, okay, we are zero based. We are good. No, nothing else needs to be paid. We don't have any things we're not seeing. It's all good. So remember last month I went on a trip and I had filmed my um, November budget. I had just gotten back. The kids and I had been in the mountains. We I was at a work trip for about three days. And I had some travel reimbursement coming and I didn't remember it. I filled out my paperwork, turned it in, and they reimbursed on the 15th and the 30th. Well, I didn't make the 15th deadline of November, so I just didn't worry about it. I forgot all about it. And yesterday I was sitting down in my prayer chair, getting myself ready to get ready for work. And I hear my phone ding, ding. And I'm like, what in the world? So I checked my cell phone. It's my bank prompting me that I had two deposits. And it was the meals and the gas travel from the trip. So that rolled us into $100 extra that we didn't have previous. And I say we, me and the kids, that I didn't have and I didn't account for. So that actually made up... Um, the, some extra money that's already given us a, over and above what we needed in order to put towards more um, items we always 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 like to give back I'm a single mom with two kids and I know what it's like not to have enough to get your kids anything just last year at this same time of the year um, there was some funniness with my money it just wasn't like it normally had been and where my ex-husband was you know paying support for the kids that totally stopped I didn't know it was stopping I didn't know he had uh, was just not paying anymore and so at Christmas time I did not have any money for my children and so I called my older children and I said listen this is where I am 
And they said, Mom, don't worry. We're going to take care of you. Take care of the kids. They weren't going to take care of me. They were take care of the kids. And they rallied and got the kids some presents. And right at the last minute, I was able to get them just a few things um, to put under the tree. But I didn't have anything for my older children. We very, we didn't have anything for, you know, the people in our lives. We just didn't have it. So I say all that to say, if we have extra, I like to find um, a family or a child or somebody that we can sponsor and try to get them something. So we have two kids that we're going to try to sponsor this year and we're going to get them something they want, something they need, something to read. And then I can't remember the fourth thing. And then we're going to do um, a stock and stuffer. And I always give my kids toothbrush, new toothbrushes, toothpaste. Um, lip balm, lotion, you know, little um, hand sanitizers. We stuff all that in a in a little stocking, and we give those things. And a, it's a tradition in our family that if you're a little kid, we'll get you a pair of jammies, because Christmas morning my kids love to just lounge around in their jammies. As soon as they come home from anywhere, they want to put on their jammies. So that's just what we do for any of the little kids that um, we know. So that is what we did. So we're a hundred dollars over to the good. Now, one other thing happened because it was Thanksgiving week. I didn't have childcare last week because I didn't have to work all week. So because I didn't have childcare last week, I was able to have a few little few extra dollars. What I would have paid for childcare, they were, that was able to stay in my account. So we were able to just do some things here and there and put a little bit aside. So that kind of went in a little bit to the. Um, Christmas budget and um, getting a few extra groceries here and there and one additional thing is happening to us now if you saw one of my latest it was probably one of my Thanksgiving videos you all know that my mom in June my biological mother in June um, called me and told me that she was diagnosed with stage 3 lung cancer and that's a tough diagnosis to hear especially when you don't have a close relationship with your mom I grew up with my grandparents her parents actually raised me they took me in and they actually raised me as one of their own and that's no shade on my mom she just was a young she was a young parent when she had me she just needed help and my grandparents they were there to help help her and um, she just called me about two or three weeks ago it was in November sometime and told me that the cancer is now at stage five so as an only child, that's tough to hear because now you have to make some choices and some decisions about your living parent. And so my older daughter is going to be off from college from about the first week in December to the first week in January. So she is going to come here and she's going to bring my mom and they're going to be here. And since there will be two extra adults here, then my little children, my little, I say little, they're 12 and 7, um, they will actually not need to have child care, um, outside child care. So I will be able to recoup some of those, you know, those financial dollars. Now my daughter will be taking my mom back and forward to treatments and stuff. It's that, we're getting things transferred here. So I'll give her gas and stuff just to go back and forth and, and money to eat and stay with my mom while she does her treatments here. But it's a blessing that they're able to help me on one end until I get off from work because I only work 19 days in December and then I'm off for two weeks. So God's already worked it out how there was going to be extra. And I'm really kind of leaning and depending on Ephesians 3. 20 and 21 that says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think I couldn't ask God to give me any more than what he's already given me and I'm thankful for that I'm not braggadocious about that I'm thankful I know what it's like to have lack and I know what it's like to be comfortable and my kids and I are comfortable and if you know if there's anything we don't have then we do without um, we have each other we have our health we have our home we don't need the bells and the whistles and all of that. We are perfectly content in the space that we're in and with one another. So I have rambled, but I did have some cash. So I wanted to show you this because I always try to show you. Um, when I went to do cash envelopes the first time, when I got paid that Wednesday, I went and I pulled out, um, I pulled out, 
I pulled out for me $216.13. That was going to be for my Black Friday shopping. In addition to the $216.13 for Black Friday, sister got commissions at $25.00 brother got commission at $10 and then my long guy got 25 so that was 50 60 so that ended up being like $276.13 I can't remember where I actually accounted for that extra $20 in there I'm sure I accounted for it somewhere but I can't remember right now at the top of my head I went and got cash out um, I think it was Tuesday Tuesday or Wednesday of this week and I actually pulled out the remaining $25 for the long guy and then my $160 for groceries. So $160 for groceries and I got I got eight twenties and then I got one twenty and one five for the long guy. So I broke down my grocery money into four weeks and I do have grocery money and so when I get my money from the teller I just ask him or her or whoever if I could have a couple extra envelopes and they give me a couple extra envelopes and I label my envelopes groceries week two week three and week four and the reason I don't have a week one is because I normally stuff week one into my wallet um but I already shopped for groceries today before I filmed this video. So the $40 that I had for grocery week one, I spent today. But I'm going to stuff into my envelope $40, which is two twenties, into week two. $40 into week three. And forty dollars into week four. So I've gotten all of my envelopes. These will go up for safekeeping. We didn't have any extra cash because we did all of our Black Friday shopping. And the last thing is I'm not doing a lot in groceries this month, especially towards the Christmas time. And that's specifically because when you're a split family, and when I say split family, I am divorced. And traditionally, if my ex-husband comes on Christmas, he comes in the afternoon. So I do a huge Christmas breakfast for my kids. They have a big spread. Grits, eggs, pancakes, waffles, sausage, grape, whatever they want. Orange juice, fruit. They do a big Christmas breakfast for them. I get up about 4 a.m. and I start cooking, put everything on in the crock pot and just redo it up. And then if their dad is coming, he usually gets here about 11 o'clock. 12 o'clock noon and then he usually takes them to visit his family and they live quite a distance away so they do have to drive so I try to be fair in that I don't want to say no he can't see the kids on Christmas we just try to split it up that's how we've done it for the last five years or however long it's been so I just try to we just try to keep that like that it works for us the kids are okay They're, they've grown accustomed to it and actually on Christmas we try to invite as many people over for breakfast as we can that don't have a place to be or you know they just want to come hang out for Christmas breakfast and then go home and have dinner with their families but anyway that's my December budget I hope it was helpful I hope you picked up some tips if you have questions or comments Leave them down in the com leave us a comment. I try to get to your comments. I do read them all and I try to answer them as best as I can. Um, I'm excited and I want to thank you for coming by and sharing our journey with us. This has been um, an exciting year um, doing this. We're really excited about it. But 2017 is going to hold some some great things for us. I've got some plans to, to work on my debt and get that $8,800 gone. I'm just going to try to chunk as much of it as I can away. I picked up some hours on Saturdays working at school, doing some tutoring. So that's going to be some extra money that I'm going to count on. But anyway, we thank you. You, you 
do not have to come by and check on us, but we're thankful that you do. We're, we're thankful to share our lives with you. Um, it, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. If there's any videos you want to see, let us know. Over the Christmas break, I'm hoping to get a couponing video out, and then I'm hoping to get a homeschool video out as well. But um, until we see you again, like our video, subscribe to our channel so you can get any updates and uploads from us, and share. The, the biggest thing I could ask you to do is share. If you know a single mom or even a struggling young family who's just trying to make ends meet, I really think that there are some key strategies that, that we could share with each other. So say, hey, go over to one mom, two girls, two boys, eight and all. They're, they're nuts, but um, she's got some strategies that may help you. Everybody needs a helping hand every now and again. So anyway, like our video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time. Bye.